and what you do today and to what degree and how urgent you're, you're focused in on it is going to make the difference. We have 10 weeks left. 10 weeks left. 70 calendar days before the end of the year. It's an opportunity to sit back and say, uh, time's up. There's not enough time for me to list or sell anything. I'm just going to get prepared for next year. I'll rest up over the next 70 days. You know, so I'll come out really strong this, on January 1st, 2nd, or 3rd. Or you could run through the finish line. You can focus and be consistent and be committed. Look at the people that are here. You know, this is still mid-October. Mid-October, we're getting close to Halloween. What happens in Halloween? So you eat a lot of candy. Good. Huh? What happens in What happens in Halloween? It's like a signal. You dress up. You dress up. Okay. You kind of pretend like you're a real estate agent. <laughs> Go ahead. What else happens in Halloween? Starts start on the holidays. Starts thinking about holidays. Okay, it's the first holiday of the winter season. Okay, what happens to that complacency that happens within us? We start to get a little more complacent. We start to energy starts to run down a little bit. Well, that happens to your competitors. It doesn't happen to you. That's what makes the difference. So we've been working over the last 20 days or so, kind of ramping up to that. And my job is to help you focus on that. So I wrote some things down here that you could be working on, some ideas and thoughts, just different approaches to how to make some money and run through the finish line. So you might want to take, make some notes on here. So critical things I wrote down here, some of the most critical things to our success for the next 10 weeks. First thought, not necessarily in any particular order. The first thought regarding prospecting. Since I've never seen the client before, these are in cold calls and when you approach the doors for expireds. Since I've never seen them before and odds are we'll never see them again, don't take what they say personally. Write that down. So many times we're stopped by somebody being mad at us at the door or angry or all you realtors are alike and that's it. You're done. <laughs> Stop doing that. You'll, you haven't seen them before. You probably won't see them again. So don't take what they're saying personally. Second thought I wrote down here, be enthusiastic and energetic in any type of presentation because logic makes them think and emotion makes them act. Logic makes them think and emotion makes them act. If I get up here and I say to you, prospecting is important and you really should consider it, that's logic. It's logical, right? But if I get up here and I tell you prospecting is the most important thing that you can work on and it's going to get you from point A to point B, similar words, different energy, different result, huh? You heard it the second way. You started to move in the second way. But your clients, when you go to the door or you go on the phone, are you a deadhead or are you alive and excited? What are you? I wrote down here the next thought regarding selling. Make the time you spend presenting be about them, not about you. Make the time you're presenting be about them, not about you. This can only be done by asking a lot of questions. Stop telling. Stop telling. Stop telling. Client, you ask a question. 
hey, I'm curious, when you move this house, where are you moving to? Well, we're thinking about going to Chicago. Whoa, Chicago, I used to live in Chicago. Where are you going to move in Chicago? I had family in Chicago. Chicago's really, really nice, except in the winter. Sometimes it's cold and sometimes it's hot in the summer. Well, there is only really one good day. So where are you going to actually move? Is that going to be close to my cousin? <laughs> well, you laugh. But if you recorded yourselves, you do that stuff a lot. I don't know why we do it. Maybe because we want to hear ourselves, I'm not sure. But we do that. Ask more questions. Be about them, not about you. Great book to reread. If you haven't read it recently, if you've never read it, you have to read it. It's a must. If you've read it but haven't read it recently, write this down. Um, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. In the book, it talks about many, many things, but in there he refers to people have written on their forehead, make me feel important. When you make the client feel important, how do you do this the easiest and best way? By asking questions about them, where they're going, what's important about it. Talk about them. Don't talk about yourself. So reread the book. Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends um, and Influence People. Next point, accountability. Break down the goals, the goals for the next 10 weeks. Ba break them down into bite-sized pieces and hold yourself accountable to each piece. Sometimes the big picture is scary. So break it down. If you want to talk to um, in 10 weeks, conceivably, you could talk to 200 people a week. That's 2,000 people in 10 weeks. You guys with me? Well, some of you are anyway. But when you look at the number 2,000, that can be overwhelming. But you look at the number 200, that's... A, not quite as overwhelming. And you break down that 200 into a daily number and that's a number that we can get our arms around and that we can deal with. Does that make sense? Chunk it down. Just chunk it down. Look. Is it possible for you to get a lead today and you're prospecting today, those of you that prospected, we generated 16 leads, according to the lead book. You generated 16 leads today. So some of you got a lead of a buyer or seller that wants to do something in now or in the near future, right? Say yes. yes. Those 16 leads, is it possible that some of those people, if you followed up at a decently high level, could you get that listing between now and let's say the next two or three or four weeks. Is that possible? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Is it possible? Yes. Okay, good. So, and if you got that listing and you priced it in the strike zone, not terribly high, not terribly low, in the strike zone, is it possible to get an offer on that property and get that property into escrow in the next, say, six weeks? Is that possible? Yes. Right, right. And if you get it into escrow, even with the new TRID program, you should still be able to get it closed in the next three to eight weeks. Is that still possible, right? Yes. So in the next 10 to 12 weeks, you should be able to close an escrow based on the effort that you put forth today. That's possible. Yes. You break it down into what's possible. And it started with just coming here, which a lot of you did, getting on the phones, which most of you did, and making a few phone calls, which a lot of you did, and ending up with a lead or two. That's where it starts. Did you guys get that? And if it didn't work today, you can always come to Irvine tomorrow. And if you don't want to drive all the way to Irvine, why don't you just knock doors? <laughs> Here's an interesting question. Did you know that with 
in a half a mile. Can, can everyone here walk a half a mile? Is there anyone that would have a problem walking a half a mile? Okay, for the most part, you can walk half a mile. Did you know that within a half a mile of this office, kind of going that way, that there's 5,000 doors out there? Do you guys, do you know that? No, it's really true, Virginia. <laughs> They're right there. And some of those people might actually want to list and sell. And if you listed and sold one of those properties, it'd be worth, I don't know, what's the price range behind us here? Five to seven hundred thousand, something in that neighborhood, in, the, in, the, in, in that area. So a six hundred thousand dollar deal at three percent is eighteen thousand dollars. Now here's a question. If, think about what you have in your checking account right now. Okay? Just think about that number. If that checking account was plus eighteen thousand dollars would that be better or worse for you <laughs> better? better not bad huh it's a little shopping test is going to go shopping <laughs> accountability break down the goals into bite-sized pieces next thought one of the best parts of the system that we work on one of the best points of the system that we work on right now is that we don't have to spend money buying business. We don't. What do you have to do? You're all in here, for the most part, using our phones. We paid for the line going out. Line coming in. Door knocking. Little bit of shoe leather, I guess. Little bit of energy. Maybe you'll have to buy a bottle of water out there somewhere because it's a little bit warm. But you don't have to pay for that. That business can be generated and it can be yours and when followed up on, and you don't have to run an ad for it. You don't have to pay for clicks per lead. Nothing. It's all there. It's amazing about the system that we work. You don't, doesn't cost you money to get started on that system. Next thought. We have to learn our scripts so they become who we are. You can't concentrate on the person you're talking to when you're thinking about what you have to say next. If I could give you one idea that you could take home today and do something with right now, it's work on those scripts and dialogues between now and the end of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, your competition is getting better. They're getting better. Every day. They're getting a little bit better. Every day, someone is practicing. And here's the thing. The, the Olympic athletes know this. That somewhere, someplace, Someone is practicing. You guys with me on this? And when you meet them, if you aren't practicing, they will beat you. That scary thought? Why wouldn't you practice? And here's the neat part. If you're practicing and they're not, more times than not, who wins? You do. Let's stack the odds in your favor, not against you. Get in there and do some practicing. Work on those scripts. Next one. This is only if you want to make money between now and the end of the year and work on running through the finish line. I wrote down here, pre-qualify 100% of the people and use 100% of the pre-qualifying questions. When you do that, you learn what's going on with the client and you learn how to work in the sales process. Why wouldn't you do that? The questions are all there, 12, 18 questions. The next one I wrote down here, you have to understand the incredible power you have giving great service to your clients. Write that down and underline it. Give your clients great service. Undersell and over deliver. Undersell and over deliver. Undersell and over deliver. If you say you're going to call your client at three o'clock 
What time should you call your client? 2.45. No kidding. Call them a little bit early. Because your 3 o'clock could be their 3.05 on their watch. You don't know. Do what you say you're going to do. So, that means if you think you might not be able to call them at 3 o'clock, they don't care if you call at 3 or 4 generally, right? Hello? They don't really care. What they care about is that you do what you say you're going to do. So if you can't get back to them till later this afternoon, give yourself a couple of hours more, and if you would have said 3 o'clock, tell them 5 o'clock and get back to them at 3 or 4 o'clock. Does this make sense? Undersell and over deliver. That's good customer service. If you say you're going to get back to them tomorrow with some information, get back to them with information. Let me ask you guys a question. Don't raise your hand, but answer. Do any of you have a lead that you had generated or somebody called you or you called them in the last 30 days that you should have followed up on but didn't. Hello? And now you can't call them, huh? Because you didn't do what you said you were going to do. I have an idea. Can I make a suggestion? Each of you trade those. You give me yours, I'll give you mine. I'll call yours, you call mine, and we're just done. That make sense? Because we know that business is out there. They gave us a hint they wanted to do something. We didn't follow up on it for whatever reason. Maybe a completely legitimate reason, but we didn't follow up on it. And now that lead is still a lead but we feel we can't follow up on it because too much time has lapsed. Okay, I get that. So if you still can't follow up on it, then trade the lead. Or better yet, just call the person and give them the answer to the question. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Customer service. I wrote down here, <clears throat> too many people stop closing after the first or second opportunity. Too many of you stop closing after the first or second opportunity. We know that sales happen really after the sixth or seventh close. So you're doing, you're getting a knee jerk no. Are you interested in buying a house now or in the near future? No. So you don't ask the next question. You go, okay, thank you, goodbye, click ask another question. That's why we use the scripts. When do you plan on moving? Never. Great. So how long have you lived in this home? Oh, about 27 years. Wow. 27 years. No kidding. Well, where did you folks move from? We moved from Los Angeles. Los Angeles? Good for you. Let me ask you. I know you said you wouldn't, wouldn't be moving, but on the outside chance you do decide to move, where do you think you'd move to next? Las Vegas. Well, have you thought about it? Well, actually, yeah. My husband and I are going out there this weekend to look at property. You got the no, but if you use the script, now you have what? A possible lead. Get it? But we stopped at the knee-jerk no. Stop doing that to yourselves. You're, you're not closing soon enough, and you're not closing often enough. I wrote down here, we have to focus on our expectations. We have to focus on our expectations. I believe that you believe that what you have is all you can get or all you deserve at some level. I don't know where it is and why, why it is. But at some level, you're capped out. We have to focus on all the great things that we have in our life and can have in our lives. Okay? How do I know this is true? Because every time I talk to you as individuals, I find that you don't think you're capable of a lot more than what you're doing 
and I believe you're capable of a lot more than what you're doing. Does that make sense? Almost in every single case, when I have a conversation with you, where are you, what's going on, what's happening in your life, I find that you're way more capable of doing something more than where you are, than where you are. Stop holding yourselves down, wherever you are. Stop doing that. I wrote down here, regarding the schedule, don't wait for it to be perfect, it never will be. Passion, desire, and work ethic is more important than a perfect schedule. Passion, desire, and a great work ethic are more important than a perfect schedule. I wrote down here the next one. Where will I be a year from now in this business? Where will I be a year from now in this business? Am I keeping the right thoughts to help me get there? Am I keeping the right thoughts on a regular basis to help me get there? And, I'm at, and am I acting like the person I want to be? Ten weeks, ladies and gentlemen, we can run through the finish line. We can focus on that. We can get listings. We can make sales. You can still do business, but can close escrows between now and the end of the year. Do you guys get that? Do you believe that? Yes. <laughs> okay, three of you do. What about this half of the room? Do you believe you can still close an escrow before the end of the year? Absolutely. Oh, one more time, all together. Do you believe you can still close an escrow between now and the rest of the year? Yes or no? Yes. Huh. Jeez. Wake up every morning and do that. Wake up every morning and do that. I, I want to I do a little test with you right now. Okay? Feel where you are. Feel the energy in your body. Okay? Just don't change it. Just note it. Everybody kind of feels where they're at and, you know, they're, you know, there's a little bit of food and, you know, you're listening to me and it's going in one ear and out the other, I wish. Uh, some of it should stop. Okay. What I'd like you to do is I'd like all of you, when I ask you to, to stand up. Don't yet. I want you to stand up and we're going to say, I'm a great salesperson three times. And each time we're going to say it louder so that the third time we are really belting it out. Okay? Then what I want you to, I just want you to do that. Then I'm going to ask you a question when we're done. So everybody let's stand up. Stand up please. Okay? Those 10,000 are at home. You can do the same thing if you're driving. Don't do this. Okay? Alright. So the first one's going to be at normal level, the second one's going to be much higher, and the third one we're going to belt it out very simply, I'm a great salesperson, okay? I'm a great salesperson. I'm a great salesperson. I'm a great salesperson! Great salesperson. Note where you are right now. Do you feel better or worse than you did three seconds ago when I asked you to note where you were? There's an exercise right there. Okay, sit down. There's an exercise right there that any time you want to change your state, any time you want to move yourself up, when you're getting ready to go do any kind of a presentation, I don't know if you guys noticed this, whenever I'm getting ready to go up and talk, Do you guys notice I ask you guys to stand up, put your hands together, and move like this? Do you guys notice that? Is that for you or me? It's for me. It's for me. It, it's my way that I manifest the energy that I need coming forward. So I do this for myself. I do it before a presentation. I do it before any talk. I do it before my coaching calls, and I do it before I walk in the door when I go home at night. Because my family deserves the best me, not the dead me. You get it? 
It's not right for me to leave it all on the floor here and then go home and give, I'm all wrung out at home. That's not right. We're doing, and we work hard, and we door knock, and we phone canvas, and we do all that stuff, and we work to bring our families the money and the support, etc., etc. But don't bring the garbage and the attitude, okay? Ring it out before you do that. Do that for yourself. Do it in the car. You know, you don't, I don't think you need, you need to be doing this on the street. You know, the, they'll kind of cart you away. I get that. <laughs> you know, I'll get a phone call. Hey, Neil, come pick up your agents. They're in the police station. They're going, ah! Do you guys get that? Do that for yourself, for the energy. I do that. So you, you guys thought I was doing this to get you excited. No, this is about me. But it's a technique I use that works. Do it for a listing presentation. Do it before you show property. Do it before you get on a prospecting, before you start prospecting. And then that's why we recommend a 50 minute hour. So you prospect for 50 minutes, and then you take a break, go get some water, go to the restroom. Do not check voicemail or emails, because that's just gonna depress you, okay? You know, walk around the building, kind of shake it out a little bit, Get into, I'm a great salesperson, three times, boom, boom, boom. And then get on the phones. Make a much better hour. I wrote down here, our results in life and business depend on three things. Our results in life and business depend on three things. Focus on these three things for the next 10 weeks. I wrote down here, attitude. Your attitude toward your business, okay? There is business that can be done, and I can do it, and I can open an escrow, and I can close it, and I can have that money before the end of the year. That's an attitude, that's the approach. I'm gonna approach it with powerful and energy and my expectations. So it's attitude, approach, and expectations. Do I expect business to be there? Do I expect people to respond positive to me? I wrote down here intensity and energy. We've talked a little bit about intensity and energy. But the, in my opinion, the difference between you and your competitors is intensity and energy. Here's what I mean. I want you to think about this. Do most agents have access to the MLS, yes or no? Yes. And do most agents put up a for sale sign in front of a house when they take a listing? Yes or no, right? Okay, and most agents do some kind of advertising either through the company or individuals on the internet, right? So most agents are doing that. And most agents, at least in our marketplaces, can put on a lockbox on a property, right? Yes. Okay, and most agents have some kind of strong local company image, correct? So what's the difference between you and the other agents? The difference is your energy. Have some. That's what the client is buying, ladies and gentlemen. The client is buying your energy and your intensity. I told you earlier today, if I got up here and I had no energy and I had no intensity, you'd hang around because some, some of what I've got to say is okay and might be interesting. And you'd hang around and listen to it for a time or two or three, maybe. But after that, I'd just be like everyone else. Just like everyone else. And that's what your client, how, what differentiates you from all the other real estate agents? Energy and intensity. Energy and intensity. That's the difference. That's what they're buying. And I wrote down here the last thought today. Today matters. Today matters. What you will do today, 
the prospecting you did earlier today, the leads you generated earlier today, the doors you're going to knock later today, the follow-up calls you're going to make later today. Today matters. The activities that you generated today are going to be the difference between whether you're going to close something before the end of the year or not close something before the end of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, today matters. Every day matters. You can't let one go. Today matters. Now let's go out there and make today count. Thank you very much.